Jerusalem Day. Tens of thousands of Israeli youth take to the streets to celebrate their united capital. With flags and banners, they dance across the Green Line, the dividing line at the center of the international fervor over Israel's rights to East Jerusalem. What exactly is the Green Line? I'm standing here on Rehov Hazan Hanim. Now this is a main thoroughfare that cuts through the core of Jerusalem. I'm also standing on the Green Line. Now this is not a physical Green Line, it's a virtual border that bisects Jerusalem into West Jerusalem, which is the area just beyond the road behind me, and East Jerusalem, which is the area directly in front of me. The term Green Line can be traced back to the Israeli War of Independence of 1948, when it became the boundary separating Israel from neighboring Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria. The victory of Israel's 1967 Six-Day War erased those lines and re-established Israel's territory to the borders preceding Israeli withdrawal from the Sinai and Gaza. I'm in Sheikh Jarrah in East Jerusalem. Before 1967, this was under Jordanian rule, not Arab-Palestinian. East and West Jerusalem were reunited as a result of the Israeli victory of the Six-Day War. Today, however, Israel is being pressured by the international community to freeze all development east of Jerusalem's Green Line, labeling such construction as settlements and, by implication, the land occupied territory. East Jerusalem has become a significant factor in the current peace negotiations, but some take it even a step further. On his trip to Israel earlier this year, UN General Secretary Ban Ki-moon said, quote, Let us be clear, all settlement activity is illegal anywhere in occupied territory and must stop. Illegal? Not according to the San Remo Conference. In 1920, it was incorporated into international law that the legal title to the land of Israel belonged to the Jewish people. The mandate was issued by the League of Nations and has never been cancelled by any subsequent binding international resolution. According to this law, Israel has the right to build because the disputed territories are within Israel's borders. Is the international community refusing to acknowledge this existing law? It appears so. Settlements are covered in Article 6 of the Mandate for Palestine, again the legal international document of the Mandate for Palestine, and clearly says that not only the Jews have the right to uh, settlement, that the world has the obligation to help them to settle. I heard do not build for Jews in Jerusalem. Imagine somebody in the White House would have said that Hispanics or blacks cannot build in Washington. He cannot say so, not in Toronto, not in London, and not in Washington. So why we accept that motion? As the city of peace, Jerusalem, is increasingly coming into the spotlight as a stumbling block to peace, one is reminded of the words of the prophet Zechariah, who foretold the events that would precede the coming of the Messiah. Behold, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup that causes reeling to all the peoples around, and all the nations of the earth will be gathered against it. So what time is it in relation to end time events? Viewing the current scenario against the backdrop of biblical prophecy, it could be later than we think. Marnie Blom, Axe News Network, Jerusalem.